Hi, today I'm going to talk about um, virtualized development environments for ATG. So I've got a couple of slides I'm going to go through and then I'll go and show you um, an example of uh, a nice uh, virtualized development environment that I use. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so first of all, why would you use a uh, virtualized development environment? Okay, ATG doesn't run on all client OS's. So I'm currently running Lion, so, so I can't really run ATG without um, a lot of fiddle and it's not really supported. ATG Search doesn't run on Windows 7. It's also good to be as close as possible to having a production environment. So my development environment runs on, on Linux, which is usually the production environment that I deploy to. It's nice and easy to roll back things when things go wrong, so I can quite simply take the file as it was yesterday, roll back the virtual disk, and I'm away. It's super easy to get new developers up and running with the virtual, virtual machine. You hand them a, a, a disk, USB drive, on a network, and install it, and away they go. It's also great for moving, if you're moving from company to company, you can take a USB stick with you, which has got all my development environment on. Okay. <clears throat> Hardware recommendations. So any kind of modern 64-bit OS, uh, any Linux, OS X, Windows 7. <clears throat> I recommend 8 gig of RAM or more. Um, I allocate 4 gigabytes to the virtual machine and leave 4 for the uh, rest of the OS. So my environment, I'm running OS X line. Uh, my virtual machine is VirtualBox 4.12 and um, I've got an 8 gig machine. Okay, now this is my setup. We've got a host, which is Lion, and over here we've got our development tools. I use Eclipse, SQL Developer, and whatever else. My virtual machine is running CentOS 5.6. I've got ATG inside the virtual machine. I also run Oracle, and I run Samba. I'll talk about Samba a bit later. I run the virtual machine in what's called natted mode, and natted mode allows you a virtual network that allows communication from the host to the guest, and it means that I don't rely on a network. There are, there are two typical forms of uh, virtual machine communication bridged, which operates via the Ethernet card and in that case um, it looks like a, another physical machine on the network so all the communications actually kind of goes through the network card which which is much easier to set up but it has some drawbacks if you're ever working away from a network um, you a lot of things kind of won't work so my NAT one um, I have a number of port forwards so when I try and communicate from this host, I forward, for example, 8080 to 8080 on the guest machine. So these are some of the typical ATG ports you'd want. Here's an example of me forwarding 2222 to port 22. So this is my SSH port. Um, there's my Samba port. And these are the other debug ports that I use. Um, if I want to bind to port 80 and 443 for HTTP and HTTPS, um, because they're root own ports, um, I don't want to run the virtual machine as root. So uh, in the host OS, I do some port forwarding. So I forward port 80 to this one and this one to here. And then inside my NAT interface, I forward this back down to the guest. Okay, let's have a look. So here's how I do all this. So this is an example of how I forward the root the root ports. Um, I'm using VirtualBox, so this is the way that I would go about forwarding, for example, the SSH port. 
I'm using a Virtio, Virtio network driver. Um, this is available on a lot of modern operating systems. Um, it's, a, it's a virtualized um, network card. Okay, I'm running the virtual machine headless, so there's no user interface that pops up. Uh, to log on to the virtual machine, I um, do uh, SSH onto it. I give it a particular user, which is the ATG user I'm going to log in as, and I go on and on through port 222. To map up the network drive, and this is how I'm going to do uh, file access. So this is how um, my Eclipse is going to be able to talk and modify the files on the development environment. So the I mount Samba drive. And if I want to unmount the drive, I do that the next one. OK, so there's a bit more networking stuff as well. So I could also want to be able to log in without being prompted for a password. So there's a site that can show you how to do that. And in the future, I might want to compact the VDI file. So um, as, the, as the virtual machine is used, it kind of fragments. So you may want to compress it down a bit after a time. OK, so these are, these are some aliases that I've got in my uh, bash profile. So I've got a start dev command, which starts the server headless. I've got um, uh, SSH dev, so this will log me in to my dev server. Also passes through um, X, so I can get through with X windows. Uh, I mount up the dev disk by typing dev disk. So this thing goes off and mounts this under my Unity directory. And if I want to start the ACC, I just type ACC and then it will tunnel through to there. Okay. Let's go on and have a look how it all fits together. Okay, we'll come to our terminal and we can see the commands we've got. Okay, so I can just type in start dev to start off the development environment. Down here I've got a shortcut which will do that for me. After the development environment is up and running, I can just SSH into it. SSH dev. Okay, so now I'm on to uh, the development server. Notice that it didn't ask me for any passwords. That's because um, I've already done a key exchange. So let's go and start it up. Okay, so that's ATG up and running now. So now I can go and test it. So there you can see the port forwarding, it looks just like the local machine. Okay, so there's um, the ATG Commerce Reference Store. Alright, so now, now we also want to map up a, a network drive to that virtual machine so that we can um, use um, our tools such as Eclipse to it. So for that um, we use Samba and uh, I've got the command dev disk. Now that we've mounted uh, the disk in Samba we can go and have a look at it. So we just go into our view and it's mapped up just as any hard drive so it's uh, indistinguishable from uh, the normal network drive. Um, another thing that we could do is we could um, log on and start the ACC. So, ACC. Now this is going through X under the remote machine. 
login and you can't really tell the difference that it's running on a remote machine with Rex. It all works fine. Okay. So now let's have a look at Eclipse running. So Eclipse is running on the mapped up network drive. You can see a couple of projects that I've got in here. Um, this is ATGEL. So this is um, a version of uh, the expression language, uh, JSDL extension for ATG, so that you can use dot notations through repositories. This is an open source project. And also you can see um, some ATG REST extensions. I'm currently working on um, an ATG iOS integration. I'll talk more about both of those in later videos. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.